the stands. The driver will get the trophy and the credit, but a good set of wheels is behind every win. They start with high strength, low alloy steel, which is a very stable material. The first of a series of die presses gives the center disc a concave profile and forms lug holes. The next press punches a hole for the hub and others called windows. Windows help cool the brakes while maintaining strength where needed. They stamp rings around the windows. This is called coining. The rings give the windows a nicer look and the action compresses the steel to further strengthen the part. The next press is critical. It forces the disc into a bowl shape and gives it precise dimensions to accommodate brakes. The specific angles also reinforce the part. It has taken a lot of punching and pressing, but the center disc of this racing wheel has really taken shape. A smaller press now punches out the lug holes that were outlined earlier. These holes will allow the wheel to be mounted to a vehicle. Then the center disc goes for a spin as a series of tools trim it. The part is now complete. To make the rim, a machine unwinds coiled steel and rollers iron out the curl. A mechanical arm maintains slack as the flattened steel goes under the knife. The blade, called a shearer, cuts the steel to length and stamps product information onto it in one swoop. An operator now winds the steel between three rollers to twist it into a band. He then places the band into the jaws of a welder, which fuses the two ends together. then slides the band into a machine that scrapes off excess material from the well. It's still warm, so it can be easily removed. Now, the band comes under some serious pressure as a machine forces it around dies at both ends to create flares. This rack transfers the rim to a series of rollers, which shape its inner ledge. This part of the rim is called the bead seat, and it will be attached to the bead wall of the tire. They trim the rim to make the edges neater. This finishes off the part. They nestle the center disc loosely in the rim. As the rim spins, they heat the outside with a torch. This causes the steel to expand and the center disc drops further into the rim. As the rim cools, it contracts, shrinking to the center part. The two parts are now interconnected, and a welding job makes the bond permanent. drills threaded holes onto the wheel to attach valve stems. As it exits, the drill turns in reverse so it doesn't wreck the threads. After a fresh coat of paint, they apply a thread locking adhesive to the valve stems and screw them into the holes. The valves will be used to add air to the tires. wheel rotates as a small roller paints a stripe onto the rim for accent. Then a press stamps a number onto it to identify this wheel in the event of a problem. And now this